Welcome back to the Building Design Fundamentals video series. This is Appendix 2, and today we're going to be creating object types for doors. You'll see the context for this video is slightly different from the previous videos, that's okay. The concepts you learned here can be applied to that project or to any project that you're working on. Now imagine that you are receiving different doors from somebody who's working in another software other than Katia, potentially SolidWorks, as is the case for the video that we're creating here. We have a catalog of doors that are coming from SOLIDWORKS and we want to create object types so that we can place them into our module. We've imported a number of SOLIDWORKS models here and we're going to use the tall double paned window as an example to create our object type. And in order to do that, if you remember from the previous videos, we need to create first a user defined feature, then an engineering template, which is a larger, more detailed assembly. We'll in include both of those into an object type We'll assign that object type to the feature inside Building 3D Design, and we'll then change LOD to instantiate the engineering template. We're going to start by creating a new window extended product. Inside that extended product, we're going to insert the imported SOLIDWORKS model, and we have a 3D shape within which we're going to model our user-defined feature. SOLIDWORKS models are imported with the Z direction not facing up, the X axis is actually facing up so we need to create an axis system within our 3d shape and then a rigid connection an engineering connection to connect our axis system that is in the z facing orientation native to katia with the x facing up native orientation of solidworks and you'll see that if you play with the angle parameter on the engineering connection you'll you'll see how that reorients itself depending on whether z is up or x is up now that the SOLIDWORKS assembly has been properly oriented, we're going to model the light geometry that's going to go into our UDF. The first thing we're going to do is rename the axis system Position. I repeat, Position. It has to be a capital P, and this is going to be the only input to our UDF. The easiest way to create the geometry that's going to be the output from the UDF is with a sketch and some volumetric pads. So let's create a sketch and let's place that on the XY plane of the position axis system that we just created. And then we'll make some rectangles. These rectangles are going to be extruded with volumes and they will form the casing and the frame of this window. And we'll also create a couple of extrudes for the openings and the glass panes. That's the only geometry that we're going to model in the UDF. We're going to keep it very light, very simple, because we don't want the UDF to contain too much geometry to weigh down the model. So in order to easily navigate your, your way around the model, let's change the view mode settings, showing the solid geometry as wireframe geometry so that we can see through it and easily locate where we need to place our, our squares and rectangles that will be output from our sketch as output profile curves and those output profile curves we use then for our volumetric pads to represent the different geometries of this window. Let's exit the sketch. And one thing I failed to do when I started creating this UDF is create a new axis system inside the geometrical set. This axis system is going to be essentially a copy of the position axis system so that the position axis system is the only input to this UDF. And then to make sure that this UDF is the only thing referenced from now on, including for the as input to the sketch, we need to right click on position, replace, and make sure that the axis system, that new axis system, is going to replace every reference or every link to the existing position axis system. Now with the output profiles from the sketch, we can start making the geometry of the window. However, I noticed now that I've exited into 3D space that the sketch isn't quite perfect. So I'm gonna go back into the sketch, make a modification, change that profile, and then exit the sketch. I'll make a first pad. This volume extrude is going to represent the overall door frame. So I'll make an extrude, click OK. Now let's make the openings for this window. And I know you're saying, now wait a second, this video is called object type for doors and we've been modeling a window this whole time. Well, the process is the same for both doors and windows. So for this case, yes, we're modeling a window. However, you'll see when we get into the placement of this window plus other doors in our 3D model, the same process is used for windows or doors. It's all based on the component-based design technology, harnessing the really powerful templatization capabilities to maximize knowledge capture and reuse and increase productivity by incorporating advanced parametric and generative technologies into your everyday modeling environment. With these volume extrudes done, we can start removing those opening volumes from the overall geometry to create the frame. Now to create the glass panels, 
I'm going to use a little Katia shortcut here. I'm going to copy two of these volume extrudes with a multi-select and control C and paste them into my UDF geometrical set. And then I'm going to change the inputs so that instead of using this larger profile three, I'm going to use profile two because that's a smaller size. It's going to represent my glass panel, the thickness of my glass panel. And I'll do the same thing for the panel above. Again, with the multi-select, I can right click on these, change the graphics properties, change the color to something a little more bluish, change the transparency so that you can see through it. And now these two volume extrudes more visually appear like glass panels. The last thing I need to model is what will be used to cut the hole in the wall when this object type is instantiated into the model. And so I'm gonna copy one of those volume extrudes, paste it again into the same UDF and change the thickness and rename it opening with a capital O. This feature needs to be named opening with a capital O. Once that's done, I can clean up the model. I can change the names of some of my other volume extrudes to add clarity to the 3D model. With all the modeling done, I'm going to add a parameter panel thickness for this window component. And that parameter is going to be exposed as an input to the UDF and it will be controlled through the window or door dialog box when this object type is instantiated into the model. So let's make a new parameter of type length. We'll call that panel thickness capital P capital T that is essential. And we'll go into the sketch that defined the output profiles for our extrudes. We'll select two lines that represent the panel thickness and we'll create an offset constraint between those two lines. That's gonna create a dimension. Double click on that dimension, right click, edit formula, and select the panel thickness parameter that we just created outside of the sketch. When we created that parameter, it had a zero value. That zero value is gonna cause an error in our sketch when we exit the sketch. So let's change the value of that parameter. Now, in order to ensure that that relationship is preserved when we create our UDF and instantiate this UDF, we need to copy the relation set from outside of this UDF geometrical set, paste it into the UDF geometrical set, delete the original formula, and go down to the pasted formula, right click, activate, and now that parameter will be a required input when we create the UDF. So let's make that UDF. Click on the user defined feature button, select the geometrical set, and then to make sure that the parameter is used as an input and not as an included component, click on it in the window. You can verify right now that the position axis system is the only input to this UDF. Make sure that the parameter panel thickness is selected as a parameter. And let's make sure that the outputs of the UDF match the frame and the glass and the opening that we had modeled in the previous steps. With that done, the UDF has been created and we can go to make our engineering template of the entire assembly. Next up, another critical component to creating an object type. The global assembly must include a publication called the base axis system. Base axis system has to be created with the define component command in the building and civil assemblies application. So go to the building and civil assemblies application, go to the components tab, click on the define component button, select the axis system and make sure that it's pointing at the position axis system. I repeat, make sure it's pointing at the position axis system. I need to modify my pointed element. So I'm gonna click on the button, select position, make sure the position axis system is selected and hit okay. When this engineering template is instantiated into the model, that position axis system is going to be replaced with an external reference to an axis system created by the host window. And that will break the link in the engineering connection. So let's edit the engineering connection. And instead of using the position axis system, we're going to use that new axis system that I created inside the UDF geometrical set. Now our UDF is complete, our SOLIDWORKS assembly is complete. Let's save and we'll go on to the next step to create our engineering template. Well, the hard work is done. Let's create a new component. This will be an engineering template. Now we'll make sure we add references and select the window assembly that we just created. One of the really important elements of this engineering template and the one way to harness the power of Katia is that we're going to assign in the engineering template which components are duplicated when this engineering template is instantiated and which components will remain unchanged. The duplicated elements will be created as new 
references in the database, whereas the unchanged components will become instances of the original component, meaning that if you change the original component, it will update the 3D model that is instanced into your model. So when we instantiate this engineering template, the 3D shape that contains the UDF and the base axis system will become a new reference in the database, whereas the SOLIDWORKS model that includes the detailed geometry will be an instance of the original model and when you make changes to that original 3D model, it will change every single instance of that 3D model in any 3D model where it's been instantiated. Let's close our parentheses there. Let's go to the input to make sure that the position axis system is the input to this engineering template. It has to be named position. It has to have it a capital P, not base axis system. If this input is not named position with a capital P, if it's named base axis system, it will not instantiate with component based design in building 3D design. You also need to select panel thickness as a parameter to the engineering template with capital P, capital T, no space between words for a list of all available parameters that you can use as inputs to your UDFs and engineering templates. Take a look at our, our wiki page. It's got all of the information there. Now to create the object type, it's new content. We're making a window object type. So search for window, click the window object type, give it a name. And the instantiation method is going to be adaptive. Click OK. Click on the resource table. The UDF will come from the UDF in our window assembly. Make sure you select the UDF. The engineering template is going to come from our engineering template that we just created. So select the engineering template. Select OK and save. Back to our catalog, I've created object types for each one of the windows and doors you see on the screen here. Let's go back to the model of my apartment unit and let's insert doors and windows. Click on the door button, select a wall, and now we can search for the object types. Here is the object type from SOLIDWORKS. And then I can use the standard door manipulators to insert the door. I've got my UDF placeholder geometry automatically instantiated into the model and the parameters that I've included in my UDF are exposed in the dialog box. Once I've searched for and used an object type, it shows up now in the, in the drop-down box of object types to accelerate the usage and reusage of those object types in my model. And now I'll just make my way around the apartment unit, inserting doors on all the walls that I need to. In order to change LOD of these object types later on, I need to make sure that the publications have been created and I can do that by multi-editing. And in the upper right gear box of the door dialog box, I can ensure that the automatic publications are created. Now I'm gonna add some of the other doors and windows to the exterior walls of this apartment unit. So I'll create a door and make sure that I select a different object type now from the drop-down list of previously used object types. There's door number one. I'm gonna make another one on another wall. Now I'll position a few windows, select the window command, select from the drop-down list a previously used window. This is the one that we just created earlier. This is going to be a different window, just a single pane, not the double pane, very tall window. Change some of the parameters there to control the size of it and we'll place one more window on the opposite wall. You see that the placement of doors and windows is a pretty intuitive process that goes rather quickly, and it's a very easy way to create these low level of detail architectural models. And there we have it. All of my door and window UDFs have been instantiated into the 3D shape. Now let's change LOD. Go to the product level, the assembly, Make sure you're in the building and civil assemblies application. Click on the change LOD command in the components tab. You should see all of your object types listed in the dialog box here. Click the ones that you want to instantiate and make sure that you've got the product and the expose options checked before clicking on process. This could take a little while, but once they're all instantiated, close the dialog box, hide your UDFs, and you'll see that Katia has automatically instantiated the detailed assembly of these doors and windows that have come from SOLIDWORKS or your suppliers or another detailed model that you've made. 
and you've gone from a low level of detail conceptual model with the UDF to a detailed model for fabrication or construction composed of higher level of detail assemblies. And because you're maximizing reuse, you're maximizing the reference and instance capabilities of Katia. If you change the detailed assembly of this model, it will update all of the instances of those detailed assemblies in this model. And it will allow you to manage the life cycle of those components by adding additional documentation and information related to operations, maintenance, or decommissioning of your virtual twin. So that's it, a crash course into the creation of object types containing UDFs and engineering templates of doors and windows. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. For more information or to ask any specific questions, rendezvous on the Katia Buildings and Infrastructure Community.